your Bibles to Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. We're all going to sing now, okay? Verse 11. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. Okay? So we'll sing this verse here. I think most of you know it, right? We've done it before a few times, so now we don't want to drag it, so let's go. All right, here we go. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. Psalms chapter 55. Psalms 55. That's not before Kings, is it? Got a little carried away there. Psalms chapter 55. Now once you have that, I want you to turn to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Now Psalms is in the Old Testament. Galatians in the New. Just in case anybody's confused. Galatians chapter 6, Psalms chapter 55. All right. Is everybody with us? All right, Psalms 55. I want you to look at one verse here, verse 22. The Bible says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Now notice, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. Then if you will in Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2. The Bible says bear ye one another's burden. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Then verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. Every man shall bear his own burden. And I'm going to violate my teaching on homiletics tonight. Okay. I try to teach those fellows to preach, and I say every sermon ought to be well introduced. My introduction to this message is to tell you I have no introduction. There is no introduction. We're not going to introduce it, all right? Uh, I'm just going to dive in, and I want to speak to you tonight on the subject of what shall I do with this burden? What shall I do with this burden? Listen, uh, that word burden, when we start talking about it, uh, you, somebody says, well, I just wish you'd preach a relevant message, something that was relevant. I'll tell you, there's not a person in the world that doesn't have a burden. That's right. I mean, there's just not. Everybody, everybody alive has to deal with a burden or burdens. All right, we've got them. Now, uh, the only ones that might not would be just little children. They have no burden, all right? Uh, they, you know, they're, they're still enjoying life. They're totally innocent, just having a good old time. But I tell you, after you get out of childhood, you get burdens, all right? Uh, burdens, and we all have them. They come in all types. I mean, you think about it. There's the cares of life. Cares of life that oftentimes are a burden to us. Uh, you say, what do you mean by that? Well, things like debt. I'm sure nobody here has any debt, right? We're all free of debt. No problem. Everything's paid for, and we're in good shape. No, man, we have a problem with debt. All right, they're out there. We have them. I, I listen to people. I, I I I listen on the radio and everything. Hear them talking about people going to college, taking out student loans, and graduating from college with forty to fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of student loan. Now, I'll be honest with you. That staggers my imagination. 
I'd just get a job digging ditches, all right? I mean, great time of day. What, what a debt to be burdened with when you step out of college, no job, nothing, but I finished. But I may not have a job, I may not have a career, but I've got a debt, all right? Well, what a burden to have to live with. What a burden to have to carry through, all right? Uh, there's disease. You know, usually we think of disease, we think of something maybe that is just uh, a, a massive problem. We think of cancer or, or leukemia. But you know, a lot of disease is just chronic things. I was visiting last night, Brother Blanton and myself, were talking to a lady, and she said, can't drive anymore. My eyesight's not good enough. I said, well, man, what caused you to lose? She said, well, I, I, maybe diabetes. You know, you can live with diabetes, but still have a burden when you have it. Right. Boy, it's a burden. We've got folks in the church that are living with things, and uh, uh, sometimes a lot of people in the church don't know it, but man, they've got a disease, they've got a problem, it's a chronic problem, and it's a huge burden to deal with. There's those kind of things. They're, they're, they're just those cares of life, the problems that come up. Then there's the burden of sin. Oh, what a burden it is. And, and so many people have not learned that the best thing to do with sin, instead of letting it be such a burden and carrying it through life and having to contend with it, and boy, if you don't confess it and you don't forsake it, it's going to be a burden. It's going to be a terrible burden to deal with. Then there's temptation. And everybody here has to deal with that. Everybody here, we deal with it. It's a burden. You know, uh, don't you get to the point in life where you say, I sure will be glad when I'm not tempted anymore. Amen. Man, what a good thing that would be. I, today I was tempted. Man, went outside. It was gorgeous. I started to leave work and not come back. Started to just call in and say, I'm away, you know, on a, a serious journey or something. I don't know. Man, it was a gorgeous day. And all those are temptations. But boy, there's a temptation that comes to us in life about so many things. And, and what a burden it can be. And what a challenge it can be. And we have to deal with that temptation. Uh, it, it's difficult. I, I'll be glad when the old devil is bound. I'll be glad when he's cast into that, uh, you know, that bottomless pit. And we'll not have to worry about him for a thousand years. We'll be able to live on this world without being tempted and without having that problem. But hey, then he's going to be loose. But there's coming a day where all eternity. Oh, what well, I want to be wonderful to have that sinless body. Never have to deal with it anymore. But until then, it's a burden. It's a burden. Hey, there's the burden of scars from sin. Scars from sin. You say, well, preacher, I thought the Lord can forgive. And he can, and he does. But folks, you and I know that there, there are some sins. You, you commit them and they can be forgiven, but the scar doesn't go Amen. away. Amen. Scar stays there. I mean, it, it, it's just there. I, I've got scars on both shoulders. They operated on my shoulder. They helped the shoulder. It doesn't hurt anymore. And I can do some things, but the scar is still there. Scar is still there. Now, that's not a burden for me, but boy, the scars of sin can be a terrible burden. They don't go away. They stick with you. Boy, burdens are there. Some burdens are heavier than others. Some are more difficult to bear than others are. But we all know what it is to have a burden, all right? We know what it is to experience that burden. Now, I believe the Bible tells us there's three things you can do with a burden, all right? You can share it, you can shoulder it, and you can shed it. Notice what the Bible said there in Galatians 6, 2. He said that we ought to bear one another's burdens. We ought to bear one another's burdens. As a Christian, as a Christian, we're to be willing. You stop and think about that. We're to be willing to bear one another's burdens. The Bible said, and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's what he did. We can share the burden of somebody else. But then right there in Galatians 6, just three verses later, verse 5, the Bible said every man, every man, all right, shall bear his own burden. Right. We have to shoulder them sometimes. We have to shoulder those. But what a blessing it is that Psalms 55, verse 22 is in the Bible. Amen. What a blessing it is to know that we can cast thy burden upon the Lord. Amen. 
and we can shed some of those. So let's look at those burdens for a minute. Let's talk about those shared burdens, would you? Shared burdens. Now, be careful about sharing burdens. Amen. Notice the Bible does not say you take your burden Amen. and share it with somebody else. The Pharisees were wonderful at putting burdens on other people. Man, their, their lot in life and nothing made them happier, I don't think, than to put a burden on somebody else and say, look, you, you're going to have to do this to be saved. You're going to have to do that to be a Christian. You're going to have to do this to live right. They just put a lot of burdens on people. Well, that verse there in, in uh, Galatians chapter 6 doesn't say to share your burden with somebody else. No, it says you are to go and find somebody who has a burden and help them bear their burden. We're to go looking for somebody else who's got a burden and say, I, I, let me help you carry that. Let me help you carry that load. You know, some people are kind of uh, peculiar about it. Kind of like the old boy was walking along carrying a sack of potatoes on his back. Had a hundred pound sack of potatoes on his back. And a fellow came driving along this dusty road and driving along in the wagon. And here, here's the man carrying the 100-pound sack of potatoes. And he said, hey, hop on up here with me. I'll give you a ride. And he said, man, I, I'll sure appreciate that. So he climbs up on the wagon, sits down, still has the bag of potatoes on his shoulder. Yeah. Fellow driving the team says, hey, just lay them in the back of the wagon. Don't worry about it. You just drop those potatoes there. And the man carrying the potatoes said, look, I, I appreciate you carrying me, but I can't expect you to carry my potatoes too. Boy, you know, sometimes that's the way we are with our burdens. Somebody comes along and would love to help us and love to pick up and love to share that burden, but we won't let them. But we're to be people that share the burdens of other people. We're to be people that care about folks. We're to be people that care about folks. We're, we're to have a concern. We're not to look around and spot somebody and say, okay, him, yeah, and her, okay, and him, and, and, and the rest of them, they're on their own. No, we're to be people that share the burdens, carry the burden, carry the load, help them. I was driving to church tonight, saw Brother Cedro walking along. Really didn't recognize him until I was passing him. And, and after I passed him, I, oh, that's Brother Stock. And I, I backed up, you know, and I said, get in. And why well, didn't say anything. He, do you realize he got in my truck without me even inviting him to get in? Hey, man. I'm serious. I knocked the door. I was fixing to roll down the window and say, get in. He's already reaching for the handle. He acted like he knew me or something, all right? <laughs> Thought he could just get in, all huh? right? Hey, good. I'm glad he feels that way. Yeah. Glad he felt that. I'm glad he didn't say, "What are you stopping for?" Yeah. Hey, you know we're we're to help people. Yeah. We're to be that kind of folks. We're to we're to be willing to bear other people's burdens. Look, uh, sometimes we get a real narrow focus. We say, "Well, I, I'd be willing to do that. I just don't know anybody else has a burden." Well, open your eyes, will you? Would you just open your eyes and take a look, man? You got people out there, they've got burdens. They, you, you can tell it if you just look at them and you'll talk to them a little bit. Be willing to bear that burden. Be willing to shoulder it with them. To share it with them and say, I'll help you. Now, I'll be honest with you, there's, you can't share all burdens. There's some things you just can't do. There's some things that you and I, I mean, we, we might like to, we might want to, but the truth of the matter is we don't have the ability to. We can't do it. Uh, but if we can, we ought to. I'll say this to you. If you have a burden, be careful. You can't share all the burdens with all the people. You need to be careful. You need to be careful. Uh, sometimes, and I don't know. I know Brother Hawkins tonight said, have an unspoken request. I don't know what that request is. I don't know that it's a burden, but it could be. And he might feel like, you know, I just don't feel like I can share that burden with everybody, but I want you to know I need some prayer. I right? need some prayer. Hey, sometimes you can't share everything with everybody. Uh, you need to be careful. You need to be careful about sharing burdens sometimes with new Christians. They'll not understand you need to take care. You need to uh, use some discernment. You need to use some judgment. But boy, how we need to be people that are, are realize, you know, folks have burdens. 
and we ought to be willing to share those burdens. We ought to go looking for them. And, and if you have them, somebody comes along and wants to share that burden, let them share that burden. Let them share that burden. Hey, we can share them, but sometimes we just have to shoulder them. But the Bible says there, every man, every man should bear his own burden. There's a lot of applications for that. Uh, I, I think, of it, first of all, this way, uh, you have to shoulder the burdens that you bring on yourself, especially by your own sin. Amen. Amen. You have to shoulder them sometimes. Right. You just have to own up to it. It means you've got to be honest about the whole situation. Yes, you have to learn to do that. You know, we live in a day of people who shirk responsibility. Amen. Man, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I, and I'm not to blame. And uh, uh, I, I, something else caused it. Something else accounted for it. Uh, they're rioting in, in Baltimore, and they've had tremendous problems, especially night before last, and, and people up there. And I'm thinking, good heavens, what in the world would make you do something like that? And a lot of times, people want to blame it on other things. Well, man, I'm just poverty stricken. And so I, I remember when they had Hurricane Katrina, how some of those folks, man, in New Orleans are just going through places and stealing things. And, and, and a lot of times people want to justify and say, well, I'm poor. Well, man, my dad should have been a tremendous crook. He was poor, all right? Hey, look, we know what we're doing. We're not willing to take responsibility. But sometimes you need to take that. You need to shoulder the burdens that you bring on yourself. I think of a Bible example. I think of Moses. Remember what the Bible tells us about Moses? He found uh, and, and he killed this Egyptian, buried him in the sand. That one came back to him later. Hey, listen, he had to shoulder the burden of killing that Egyptian. He had to do that. He couldn't blame it on somebody else. He had to shoulder that burden. Sometimes there's burdens you have in life. The thing to do with burdens is not ignore them, not walk off from them. Some, you just have to shoulder them and take them and carry them. They're there. They're there. I, I think at the time we were in Washington, D.C., and uh, we were there with a group of kids from our Christian school. My wife was there. My son was a little guy. And, boy, we had planned it all out good. We had a little stroller that we could fold up and stick in the airplane, and we took it with us, and we, we got it out there, and we were in Washington, D.C. We are going to walk all over everywhere and put him in it, and we started rolling around, and, and, boy, the whole time he was in the thing, he just screamed and hollered and screamed and hollered. And I had to pick him up out of it. If we'd pick him up out of it, he'd, he wouldn't scream. Now, he'd ride in another stroller here, but not that one. It was different. Man, I had to shoulder that burden, okay? All around Washington, D.C. I mean, for several days, all right? I came back a lot better developed than I ever had been because, and, and carrying that burden, you know, around. And, and I, well, now I see him carrying his son, and I'm thinking, serves you right. <laughs> serves you right, you know. You deserve every bit of it. Hey, uh, that wasn't something that, you know, now, I was joking. He wasn't a burden. He was a chunk of heaviness, all right? But, hey, but you know, sometimes in life, we just have to shoulder our own burdens. Uh, we, we just have to deal with it. Some burdens are put on us for our own good. Some burdens are put on us for our own good. Some burdens are put on us to prove us up. Look, if you will, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, the Apostle Paul speaking here. He said in verse 7, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan above it me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. Hey, God put a burden on Paul for Paul's good to teach him something. Hey, it was a burden. It was a burden to the point that it bothered Paul so much that he asked God 
if he would take it away from him. He would deliver that from him and, and he'd not have to deal with it anymore. But instead, God said, no, I want to teach you something. My grace is sufficient. Listen, you have burdens, some burdens that you go through in life. You wonder why? Why do I have to put up with this? Why do I have to endure this? And, I, and I'm not saying to you tonight I've got every answer, but I'll say this to you. Sometimes God gives you a burden for your good. For your good. And, and, and to mold you and to make you. To help you. Don't, don't try to just get rid of it. Sometimes you just need to shoulder the burden. God wants to do a work in you. Sometimes you shoulder that burden. A man want to tell you what a great thing it is in Psalms 55. There's times that you can just take that burden to the Lord and leave it there. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. He will to tell you help's available. Help's available. We're, we're told here in the scripture to cast our burdens on the Lord. In the New Testament, the Bible says we can cast, you know, every care, we can cast all of our cares on Him, for He careth for you. And He does care for you. Hey, we can shed some burdens, we can bring them to Him. And the great thing about it, notice the great promise there is there He shall sustain thee. He shall sustain thee. I started to preach this message, and I preach it a little differently than I have, and I started to entitle it on, uh, what are you leaning on? You know, sometimes we lean on the arm of the flesh when we ought to be leaning on God. Amen. We ought to cast our burden on Him. Give it to Him. Not try to lay it off on somebody else. Not try to put it on them. But take it to the Lord and give it to Him and cast it upon Him and seek His help. Learn to lean on Him. Have you ever been carrying a load maybe in some kind of work or something like that? Or maybe it was a hike. I don't know what it was. Have you ever been doing something like that? And man, you got tired, but you thought, if I set this down, I'll never get it back up again. So you just lean on something, right? And just lean on it. You say, I've got to rest a minute. I've still got the burden, but I'll just rest a minute here. Well, sometimes you need that to lean on. Sometimes you need that leaning post. It's amazing how, how good you can be just to lean on something. Now, I don't know. I, I'm not sure about you ladies. I was thinking about this today. Uh, you watch men. We men are leaners. You get us a, a we'll lean against the wall. Amen. All right? We'll, we'll, we'll put an elbow on something just lean, all right? I, I get uncomfortable sometimes just standing. Amen. Out somewhere, you know, and it, I'm standing and it, I just get uncomfortable. So I'll sidle over to something where I can lean on something. Because if I can lean on something, it just seems like the burden is not as bad, all right? Listen. The Bible tells us, cast all your cares upon him. The Bible says, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. Sometimes you're going to have experiences in life. You're going to have burdens in life, and, and you can't completely dump them. You can't get rid of them. They're going to be there, but you can lean on the Lord. You can come to him. You can put that on him and say, Lord, I need some help. You can go to him. He said, Preacher, I don't have any burdens. Good, you will. You will. And if you don't, there's some people here to be happy to share some with you, all right? They've got burdens. And, you know, we, I mentioned earlier that the old song says, Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. What a, what a good thing it is to do that. I was reading, this years ago, and I was reading about. Uh, Dr. J. Frank Norris, and supposedly he said this. I, I can't, I don't guess, absolutely prove it, but he said, uh, you know, he's talking about people worrying about things. He said, I found out there's two things in life I worry about. He said, I worry sometimes about things I can do nothing about. 
And then I worry about things that I can do something about. And he said, I found out the things that I worry about that I can do something about, I ought to do it and then quit worrying about it. Right. And the things that I worry about that I can't do anything about, when I worry about them, worrying won't change it. So I might as well quit worrying about it. You know, I think about burdens that way. We've got burdens. Sometimes we can share them. Sometimes we just have to shoulder them ourselves. But sometimes we can shed them. We can take them to the Lord. We can cast our burden upon Him. I want to tell you, what are you going to do? All right? What are you going to do with that burden you've got? A lot of it depends on the burden. Well, what is that burden? Is it something that you can work to fix? Well, then go to work to fix it. If it's a burden that is yours, maybe it's scarred by sin, maybe it's cares of life, uh, may not be much you can do, but you just have to shoulder it. You have to face it. You have to deal with it. God's maybe doing something in your life with some of those things. You just have to shoulder that burden. But boy, if you got some there that the devil's put on you, learn to take them to the Lord and cast that burden upon him and let him sustain you. Let him take care of you. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, tonight for the word of God. Lord, we have burdens. We deal with burdens. We have to face them. Lord, I pray you'd help us to learn what to do with the different burdens that come our way. Or maybe tonight there's folks here that just need to come to you and cast their burden upon you. I don't know what the burden is. They need to trust you to sustain them. Or maybe they need to come tonight and pray for strength to bear the burden that they have. They need to seek your help in it. Lord, I pray you'd help us to do what we need to do tonight with our burdens. With every head bowed and every eye closed tonight, I just ask you, do you need to come tonight? Do you need to come to the altar and pray? Do you need to just take a few minutes and let, you know, deal with the Lord and come to Him and maybe you need to bring a burden and cast it upon Him? Would you do it? We're not going to sing. We're not going to play any music. We're just going to give you a chance to do it. If you, if you need to, go ahead and come. We're not going to wait long. You bring your burdens to the Lord. Cast those burdens upon Him. Pray for strength. Pray that God will strengthen you to handle the burden you've got. Those of you maybe that are there in your pew, would you pray for those that have come? Would you pray for them? Help them to deal with the burdens they have tonight.
Heavenly Father, we pray tonight for those that have come. Lord, you know the need, you know their heart. Lord, I pray you to help with every burden. Help with each woman and each individual. The things they're facing, the things they're dealing with. Lord, would you give them strength to be able to shoulder the burden they have to bear. Lord, give them wisdom that they bring the burdens that they can cast upon you, and they would do that, and allow you, Lord, to sustain them in life. And Lord, help us to be a people that care and have a desire to help bear the burdens of others and make us a people that are that way. Go with us now tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.